have any questions, uh, feel free to put the questions in the question box. I'm going to try and keep this webinar to about 20 minutes long. So we'll wait to answer the questions till the very end. But again, thank you guys for uh, taking time on your busy schedule to uh, listen to me talk and go over simple control. So today we are going to go over what and who simple control is, the future of home control, system overview, product mix, and the simple service uh, subscription. So again, uh, this is going to be a quick, brief webinar, and uh, I'll try and make it as painless as possible. First of all, what is simple control? And before we get into simple control, I want to give you a quick history of where simple control came from and who created simple control. So simple control was founded by Will Price. Will Price actually started PGP, it was a co-founder of PGP, which is pretty good privacy, is what it stands for. As a corporation that started in 2012, they created security software that was used by governments, businesses, banks, all across the world, from Switzerland to Wall Street. Uh, in 2010, they sold PGP to uh, Semantic, and Will, he always had a passion for AV. So what he did, he had this desire to simplify home automation. And that really re led to his first universal control app, which was Rumi. And if anybody has an iPhone or an iPad and you search for universal remote control on the App Store, Rumi pops up a lot. So in 2011, uh, an IP-based you know, control system showed up and that was Rumi. It was renamed in 2015 to Simple Control and the reason they renamed it and expanded was because they wanted to create it larger. So instead of expanding onto Rumi, they decided we're going to make it a full new control system. And now it works with nearly every major CE IoT brand. Um, if you guys don't know what IoT is, it's Internet of Things. They're able to control over 300,000 devices, and there's over 120,000 homes and businesses that isn't across worldwide already. So, with the introduction to Simple Control, they've taken the award-winning Rumi software, which we talked about, and added a ton of new features, giving it uh, more custom solutions for residential and like commercial applications. So that's a quick overview and history of how Simple Control came about. Now let's get into what system uh, Simple Control is. It's a sophisticated app-based control system. Uh, it does only work on iOS. Okay, so let's just get that out right away. It's only iOS. It does not work on Android right now. All right. It does provide full two-way interface for any IP device, so you're looking um, looking at home theaters, AVRs, uh, flex me or media servers, direct TV, cable subscription providers, the list keeps going on. So it takes control and really uh, takes the Internet of Things into a perfect control system. It uses local Wi-Fi. Uh, it integrates with all the devices where it's TV, cable, like I said, and it gives you a rich two-way experience that is customizable. You can move stuff around. Uh, if you if you don't like you know certain layouts, you can customize it a bit. It isn't a blank slate, but this is for very easy programming, and it does give you the ability to do tie into voice control for like Amazon Echo um, and items like that. We'll get into that a little more. But it has the ability to program event timers, triggers for external devices, and really be able to actually take advantage of some of this automation. Simple Control has the largest IP library and does have a complete IR library providing over 300,000 commands to control the smart and legacy products. So whether you're doing IP or IR, uh, you have this, you have it covered. Uh, here's a list of some of the major ones that they do have available uh, that are full two-way. 
uh, works very well. I've got one at my place that I've tested and it works really well. Very easy to set up. So these are just some of the items on here that do give you full two-way via IP. Simple Control is the complete package. It offers functionality. It also offers something easy to use. So whether you have an iPhone or an iPad, it's a full two-way interface, very easy for the end user to be able to just hop on and control. Uh, there's very quick programming, uh, which honestly, people, if you can cut down on programming time and make more money, that's what we're all about. Let's talk about how it works. It communicates with the AV, with the smart home, all of, throughout your network. So again, every webinar we talk about, and every webinar I do, you kind of notice that I start that I mentioned network in every one. That's because that's the way the world is going. We we need to take control of the network, and if you're not, I would really start looking at it because it's a huge aspect that you guys can get into. Um, there's great resources out there to take advantage of the network. If you have any questions on it, feel free to reach out to me or any of your account managers at Capital, and we've got some great product lines, easy to set up, so you're going to want to take advantage of the network uh, to be able to really optimize on not just control, but everything. There's streaming audio, stream, you know, AVRs, everything's on the network now. So you want to take advantage of that network. It's a revenue stream that's, you know, a lot of you guys have not tapped into yet. So that's my rant on networking. It mentions, I mention it in every webinar I do, and uh, I hope that it just helps you get to take the step to get into that if you haven't yet. Now, it does work actually via cloud base as well. So it's able to easy set up and easily pull info right from the cloud. Voice control, TV guides, all of that. And it's a really simple little system. Everything comes in a little box. Uh, it comes with the hub, comes with the iOS Android licenses, or the, I, not Android, I'm sorry, <laughs> iOS licenses, uh, and uh, it's right there easy for you. Now there's five core components of the simple control system. There's the app, there's the simple service, which is service plan, uh, that gives you as media, DVR guides, TV programs, all of that stuff for the simple in the simple service, it does do full multi-home. So there's simple multi-home, which includes the simple system plus the simple hub, and then there's the simple hub itself, and there's the simple blaster. That gives you the ability to add on IR devices as well as others. Uh, and we'll get into some of the other stuff in, uh, later on in the PowerPoint. Now, the user interface is actually very able to be unique. I mean, there's not a ton out there that kind of look like this, that you're able to drag around, drop, and customize it for the end user. So if they're left-handed, right-handed, you can move that around a bit and make it easy. And they, they take really good advantage of the real estate on iOS and Android devices. Or, again, I keep saying Android. <laughs> iOS devices. Um, this way, this is just a quick uh, picture. It gives you a full TV guide, as you can see on the right-hand side. It gives you all of your info right in the middle of what's actually being watched. And it gives you control of not just your uh, cable box, but also it gives you other control too if you need. So very nice, easy two-way. You can see that they're controlling TV on the top, uh, AVR for audio with two-way feedback of where the volume's at, including what's going on for your AVR below or your uh, cable box below. Quick overview of some of the awards that, cap that uh, Simple System actually has won. Uh, Tech Home, 2015, 2016, uh, Dealer Scope, 2017, CE Pro, it's been pushed in CE Pro. This is a really cool little system that is very easy to set up, very easy to make money on, 
and uh, very uh, easy to expand on. Let's give you a quick overview of actually some of the screenshots. So Apple TV, you can actually see it's giving you a full list of what's on the Apple TV. Full Sonos integration. You can see individual room control for volume, muting, linking, and uh, receiver internet operation, which is you know, your full media streaming right over the network receiver. A lot of info, a lot of stuff that you can easily do with this system that is doesn't take a ton of programming. They also have not just iPhone and iPad, you can tie in the Apple Watch too. And it does in-app transfers, which means you want to be able to tie in certain apps, you can actually add the button right into the simple control system and easily jump back and forth, as you can see in the lower uh, right-hand corner. It's got handset control. So you don't have to, if you're listening to the uh, watching TV and you want to adjust the volume, you don't have to unlock, open up your phone, find the volume button. You can use the volume up and down right on the side of your iPhone, your tablet, uh, to be able to control it. Really nice feature especially when you're using an, a phone or a tablet for integration. It does have gesture control as well. And a really cool feature is phone call pause. You don't see this very often, and it's a great little feature where it can pause your show automatically or your music automatically if your phone rings. Since it's all driven from your phone or tablet, you can actually easily tie that in. Really cool feature that is not in a lot of control systems. Just the little things like that are, are awesome. Now, everybody is on voice control, the new hot thing. And you can integrate it with this. Again, it takes advantage of the IoT, and that's what the platform of the Echo is on, the Dot, the Tap. It also takes uh, advantage of the Amazon Fire TV all via IP control. Remote access as well. You can access this from off-site with uh, very little setup. It's, since it's cloud-based, it's very easy to set up for off-site control. It gives you, since it's off-site control, it also gives you multi-location, multi-home control, multi-business control. You're able to actually set up different accounts as well for admin, guest, for certain control, which is also very, very nice. Now, we keep talking, it's called simple control. It's called simple system. And the key word in there is simple. It has instant auto discovery. It's got automatic commands for activities, meaning when you add the devices in, it's going to create your, most of your macros for you. So when you add in a TV, an AVR, and a Blu-ray player, it knows that the Blu-ray player is plugged into the Blu-ray port on the AVR, and the AVR is plugged into the TV. And it's going to create that macro for you, the on and off and everything else. So very easy macro creation. You can add on and add on to the macros. So if you want some lighting control, you want... Uh, certain features to be able to build into that, you can do that. It has automatic synchronization, meaning if you make a change from your phone, it's going to change automatically on your tablet. Since it is all Wi-Fi, it is all cloud-based, it automatically adjusts that for you. And the right size, it automatically, when you add something to your iPad, you don't have to create two different UIs. It's going to auto-configure the sizes for whatever user interface you're using. Simple service subscription. The first year of simple service is included. Okay. All providers show your phone, tablet, not your TV blocking the view. Uh, it supports Dish, DirecTV, TiVo. All of this stuff is built into the subscription. Continue software enhancements. So again, this is more of a service plan to be able to actually, so they can keep developing more stuff for you. Uh, it's able to operate up to 100 devices. 
yearly, yearly renewal, uh, sorry guys, <laughs> yearly renewal is $50, $49.99. Okay, the first year is free, every year after that is 50 bucks. Now let's get into the products a little bit. Now very, very few products, which makes it really easy to spec. They've got the complete system that comes with the hub, which also gives you the ability to do multiple homes, things like that. And they've got the standard software package. I would definitely recommend going with the hub. Okay, complete system, 429, 430 bucks is not a spendy system when you're looking at a control system. So now we talked about the blaster. We keep saying this blaster. They've got three different models of the blasters. Okay, the CBE100 is a standard network, so it doesn't have Wi-Fi, it's hardwired. The CBW120 is a wireless version, hence the W. And the CBE, which is Ethernet 110, that actually has the ability to power via PoE. So the 110 is PoE, the 100 Ethernet is non-PoE, so you have to plug that in. And the W120 is wireless. Okay, so I mean, and this box is very small. I'm get, you know, I haven't measured it, so it's about three quarters of an inch thick, about an inch wide, and about I don't know, two to three inches long. Really small little box, very easy to mount, and it's got power. It's able to power three emitters, uh, at two emitters and a blaster. If you want, it is bi-directional, so it has that ability as well, um, and you have the ability to add any of these cables to it. So if you don't want to do IR, you can do serial. You can do relay. You can do 485 or 465 serial control if you need. Uh, or most people don't have this, but a 3.5 to a 3.5 serial cable. And everybody that has all those old Zantec IR emitters still, they've got a cable that you can actually adapt in IR, the Zantec as well. So they've covered all their bases here. One box, you buy the cable, which you need to control it, makes it very easy to spec. So you don't have that many items. And if you guys are looking at using this for commercial applications, they've got licensing for commercial applications. Five-year subscription, $199. That's a max of 20 devices. Okay, Five-year subscription with 100 devices is $500. Bucks. Okay. If you have over 100 devices, that's going to be quoted on a case by case. So just keep that in mind. 20, 100, 100 is kind of that magic number. If you notice 100 devices in the home, 100 devices in commercial, unless you want to drop down to the 20 devices, maybe you're just doing direct TV or your cable boxes. And if they want to control the TVs as well, and next thing you know you're up in over 100, give us a call. We'll get that priced out for you. That is it, guys, for the webinar. We do have a training day special like we normally do. Uh, it is buy a simple control system with a hub. And the blaster. And you get a free demo copy of the full simple system. So one thing to keep in mind, if you're not a dealer yet, Give us a call. You do have to be a dealer and sign up for Simple Control. Uh, just give us a call. Give myself, give your account manager a call. We can get you set up today. This promo is valid through February 10th. Okay, so you got a couple days. Unlike some of the other promos we've ran, it was that day only or 24 hour window. You have to attend to be able to take advantage of this. I would not wait, especially if you're not already signed up for Simple Control, uh, because we don't want you to wait until the last minute, then have to try and get you signed up and get you uh, to be able to still take advantage of it. Okay. So one thing keep in mind, this is a training day special for capital only, so please do not go out and do this. You know, go <laughs> go and duplicate this or distribute it. So, um, But buy the simple control system that has the hub in it and an IR blaster and you get another free demo copy of simple system as well. So. I see that we only have three questions in here so far. It looks like uh, Lutron Raw 2 
Uh, I know it works with Caseda because that's a cloud-based system. Raw 2, I, I don't believe that they do have the ability, but I will have to double-check on that. I apologize. Um, I don't know if we have any. I'm just looking through our list right now to see. Oh, never mind. I was just checking, Rob, to see if you were online. Uh, Rob Zerns also on here. He just posted the question. He's actually uh, works with Simple Control, uh, and uh, yes, it does work with Raw 2. Will it work with NVIDIA Shield? Rob, do you want to answer that one? Let me, uh, Rob, I'm actually going to unmute you here as soon as I find you in the list. Rob, are you there? Hi, Chris. Yeah, I'm here. <clears throat> Perfect. Perfect. You can help me answer some of these questions. I'm going to run some of these off. Uh, some of these I can answer. Some of them, uh, depending on where you're at with uh, development, it may or may not work. So. Uh, next question I have is, how many licenses are included? Rob, do you want to go into the licensing a little more? Sure, Chris. Um, the, the license for the application is a, um, it's a single license, but keep in mind that that license includes multi-home, which means we don't limit the number of homes that are on a configuration license. So you can have multiple configurations and you can scroll between them as long as you're not hitting, again, the, the device limit that you're uh, set at, which is 100. So um, that one license can operate as many locations as you have available under that same account. And again, if you think about um, uh, remote management, you can, as a dealer, um, provide your uh, account to the, to the uh, customer's account, and you would have actual, actually access to all of your customer accounts on that same application. So right within the application you can have all of your locations as well as all of your customer account locations just on a scrolling list so you can um, scroll through it log into theirs make changes see what's going on uh, update the software that gets pushed down to their hub and then if they're not home or the next time those uh, wireless controllers access the system they will get that update pushed out to them awesome and uh... Next question, I believe, you know, the question is actually, can you have multiple controllers for a single system? I think, and, and Blaine, you can, uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe uh, your question is maybe, can I have multiple blasters on the system? Because it's really one system, it's one hub, and, uh, you know, and then you're asking, uh, can I have multiple blasters? And the answer to that is definitely, you definitely can. You, you are limited, like, you, like Rob just said, to 100 devices on the system, but however you're controlling it, uh, you can definitely do it, and oh, you, you just uh, reacted multiple iOS devices. So yes, you can have multiple iOS devices in the system. It is a cloud-based system, so you can actually it will auto sync between them. Yeah. So to be clear, when we say a hundred device limit, that's that's purely the devices you're controlling, the controllers, the phones, the iPod touches, the iPads. Again, we don't limit the number of uh, controllers that can be used on the system. They all will stay synchronized. And, you know, in clarification with the hub, the hub itself actually does not have any outputs. It's really just the network connection. And so think of it as an iPad that doesn't have a screen but runs the app just the same. And so it can control all of the devices. It doesn't have to be in any particular spot. It can be just set up on the network, and that's really all it needs to do. Yeah, so that's your basically that's going to be your uh, master processor. So whether you have a phone or not, you're going to need that running. You need some, you need a controller running if you, especially if you're doing any automation triggers or anything like that. And that's where really the hub's going to come into play. Um, okay. Yeah, Chris. I mean, the the system could run off of the um, wireless controller, but the key thing is phones and tablets are mobile, and they get shut off or they leave the network. The hub is always there, so it's best to have there. one sitting there so it keeps everything synchronized. So the next question is, will it work with the NVIDIA Shield? Uh, Rob, do you know if that, if, do you know that answer? So maybe the best thing to do, uh, Chris, is um, <laughs> basically provide a link to the compatibility chart on our website, which goes through all of these products. You know, it'll talk yeah. about what we can do with those things, what feedback we're getting from them, and the categories that are listed. And you'll be able to see um, pretty much everything. And so the list is on our website. It's just called the compatibility chart whether we talk to those devices via infrared serial or contact closure or um, uh, IP. Everybody can still see my screen, correct? We're going to go to simplecontrol.com. 
And let's see here. Guide me through this real quick, Rob. Where am I going for, uh, oh, right there, device compatibility or compare. So it's just divided into IP, um, IR, and serial. These are all the IP um, control devices. Most of them are out of discovery, but we also have uh, devices that aren't necessarily out of discovery, but to be manually added to the system. And then the feedback and, and the information we're getting back from those devices. You can actually do a search. If you go to the IR portion of it, you can do a search for your product. So, again, the, the code sets are pretty standardized, but you can search for those um, devices since there's many thousands of them that are listed here. So, uh, one thing to keep in mind, guys, that this is a cloud-based system. So this this list is always evolving. You know, if it's not here and it's a big thing, you know, I would I would maybe reach out to Simple Control as well. Like I said, Nvidia Shield I don't see on here for IP right now, um, but that that's something important. You know, Simple Control is always looking for for feedback as well. So, um, you know, if there's something on here. That, that is a huge thing. I mean, I, I've been slowly hearing a little more about NVIDIA Shield and uh, a few more people using it. It's, you know, if it starts to get that, you know, that stuff, it shoot, go to contact real quick and, and shoot them, uh, you know, just, just ask for it. I mean, nothing ever hurts to ask a manufacturer if, if it's going to be, you know, if you, they can look at it, if it's going to be on the list, whatever it is. So always reach out. Uh, Troy, the question of uh, simple control versus URC total control. Uh, we'll take that one offline. I'm not going to get into really comparing all these different lines because we do carry a lot of automation systems. Um, and I don't want to get into, it's already 9.30 almost. <laughs> we can take that one offline if we want. Uh, let's see here. Uh, does the dealer get caught off, or get a cut of the subscription r and &R? Rob, do you want to? Yes, when you sign up... Uh... When you sign up a customer, um, the uh, the sign up process <clears throat> on our website, there is a portion to add the reseller information. And that is important because that's how we would link that customer account to the dealer. And so the dealer would get a recurring revenue option um, when they're a direct dealer for uh, Simple Control. So, yes, you guys do get a cut of RMR, which if you guys have been to any other of my other webinars, and we talk a lot about RMR, if you can get something, you know, and, and do the work once and keep getting paid for it, what better way is that? You can sit there on your couch with a cup of coffee in your underwear and still get paid. You know, so a huge, huge benefit to a lot of other automation systems that don't have that RMR available. Next question is, can you write full macros for home theater with uh, time delays, variables, et cetera? You definitely can. Uh, now, uh, I don't know, Rob, if you want to get in a little more, but you can definitely start with your pre-built macros that they built for you. You can edit, add delays, add other uh, devices in there. So I don't know if you want to go a little more into that, Rob, um, or kind of got that covered. Yeah, the macros, um, the default, you know, when you, when you have the, the AVR and the projector added to the system, those will be built in, but you can add any other commands that you wanted to, you know, set the volume to 44.5 dB, um, go to surround mode, Dolby Digital, um, turn the lights down to this scene. Um, you can have uh, nested activities, so an activity can reference another activity within that. All of those time delays can be um, concurrent or staggered. So you've got a lot of flexibility. You can also do conditions where don't execute this command if this other um, uh, condition is met or not met. So it's it's a lot more flexible and customizable once you get past the kind of the automated um, build of that uh, activity. You can get into and do whatever you want after that. And Rob, can you go? Uh, next question is: Is what about users, wife, kids, etc.? I'm I'm taking that question on uh, different customized user interfaces for uh, for the different users. So if the wife likes one kind of user interface or we want to limit the kids users to only being able to not being able to throw the master bedroom only their room um, you know I don't know if you want to go into a little more of the uh, the customizability of it and per user and or uh, limitations yeah Chris I can 
the the configuration is is global so all devices or all controllers will have the same configuration now you can take a controller and limit what capabilities that controller has so if if you only want to have them control one room and have no editing capabilities anywhere in the system you can certainly do that that can be password protected and so if you were the um, user and you wanted to make that change you can unlock that temporarily and make that change if you wanted um, the, the other option really is you would build activities that are customized for that particular user. So you might have two direct TV options for the bedroom and um, you know kind of a his and her uh, solution and that activity will be customized exactly to that um, user's preference down to what guide what channels are on the guide, the layout of the remote, what opens up, you know what other portions of the activity needs to be uh, turned on or turned off. So it's it's useful that way where you can kind of create user preferences within the configuration and then have editing or uh, no editing capabilities and then limited to one room uh, control based on the controller itself. Perfect. I hope that answered your question there and uh, let's see here. What's, uh, the questions are still rolling in here a little bit. Uh, remote access. That one's going to be real easy. Yes, remote access is possible. Multiple homes are possible. Uh, since it is cloud based it's very easy to remote in and uh, and control any system you want so if you are home and you want to check on your lake cabin you can definitely do that uh, let's see here is there a preferred handheld remote for clients or is it uh, dealers choice that um, one um, go ahead I'll well, let you take that one around yeah, it's both. I mean, uh, currently, um, we'd be recommending anything that can run iOS 10 or above, and so that includes um, pretty much uh, the, the newest phones, obviously, uh, iPads of all flavors and sizes. And the key thing that Chris hinted on is you can build this entire configuration on any device you want or any controller you want, and it will scale out and maximize the resolution and space of all of the other controllers. So. If you build it on an iPod Touch, it will actually scale that configuration out to take full advantage of an iPad Pro. So there's no, you only have to build a configuration once, and the app will actually scale itself to those other uh, controllers automatically. So personal preference is, is you know, typically the phone. They've always got the phone, so it's always in their hand, and it's it's uh, using it with like what Keith or um, sorry what uh, Chris was mentioning was gesture control and hard button uh, volume on the side gets you a really nice um, single swipe control system uh, right in your hand. It's, it's, it's kind of the right size if you need more real estate when you're doing searching the DVR programs or searching the uh, guide for a particular uh, program because we have two weeks worth of information on every channel. Um, an iPad mini or an iPad Pro definitely gives you more real estate to work with that way. Perfect. And uh, one other thing uh, real quick, Rob. Uh, they're asking, you know, we've got a couple questions on here, and uh, for more advanced training, uh, where where to go for more advanced training on this? I mean, they can definitely, you guys can definitely reach out to me. I'd be happy to discuss more on it one on one. But also, uh, Rob, uh, you're you're kind of in that training field uh, with Simple Control. What uh, what do you guys have for training? Yeah, Chris. Typically, it's it's about once a month. We have uh, basic and advanced training, kind of a um, a live demo, sort of like this, where we're actually uh, building and showing the app um, in process at that time. And if you're a dealer, you'll get invited to all of them. And so it's just basically up to you if you want to join those um, online trainings. What I really do try to stress is if you um, sign up and become a dealer and you get that first system, that we would. Uh, go through the at least the basic training but um, we can certainly set up an individual live demo that way and kind of customize it to the products and parts that you're using it for the first time in the system and get you up and running very quickly and then after that you'll start to be able to um, customize it um, very easily but you know the, the biggest um, challenges that we've seen with the system at least on the first go round is not necessarily the app, the app's pretty straightforward to build off of it's making sure that the, the controllers or the devices that you're controlling are actually set up for IP control because most of them out of the box do not allow for third-party integration whether it's Energy Star compliance, Echo mode, 
Um, security uh, scenarios, there's some settings that usually have to be changed. Again, we try and have that information on a compatibility chart. It's ever changing, but that's where we kind of walk through that first system uh, design and it works pretty well after that. So if you do have a question like that and you wanted to get started real time, obviously uh, talk to Chris and if, if it's something that we can uh, be a part of, we'd be absolutely happy to do that too. Yeah, and Simple Control also has training videos available on uh, VMO as well. So um, we'll make sure that that link is, well, is also attached to this webinar when we post it. Uh, so you guys can actually watch this webinar again, and you can access the actual Simple Control trainings as well. Um, so biggest thing, if you guys are looking for more advanced training, again, reach out to myself, reach out to your account manager at Capital. We'll get you set up as a dealer, so then you're on those uh, on that mailing list, and you have the uh, info to to when the trainings are. So the first steps for you guys, whether it's taking advantage of this training day special, which I would definitely recommend doing it, uh, because I'm a sole believer in you learn it best if it's in your hand and you're playing with it. So you can watch as many videos as you want, and you think you're a pro at it, but as soon as you have that in your hand, everything changes. So take advantage of these training day specials, get online, uh, get, reach out to your account manager and get set up as a dealer. Uh, it, it's so easy, it takes no problem at all, it just takes a quick phone call. So uh, with the trainings, again, we'll be posting this webinar as well on the Capital site and I will also put the link in there for advanced training with Simple Control as well. So, And the last one is, what is the sale price? Uh, I'm guessing you're asking what is the sale price for the simple system and hub. And I can show you right on Capital website will be the easiest way. Everybody can still see my screen. And obviously we have every simple control item in stock whenever you guys need them. And here's the full system. Standard dealer price is $213. Retail or $29.99. And the training day special, if you get purchase the this item right here, the simple control system with the hub and the blaster, you're going to get a free simple control demo system for free. And that right there again, if you have any questions on it, here's the training day special again. If you buy the simple control system with the hub and the blaster, you're going to get a free demo copy of simple system. So that does not have the hub in there, but you get the free system, the full package right here is what you're going to get for free. And to be clear that that is a full-fledged system. It has the hub software as part of it. So again, you can use an iOS controller or a Mac OS X or um, using it as the hub. But again, that's going to need to be a dedicated always-on uh, device. So it does everything that the one with the hub does. It's just that it doesn't have that piece of hardware. And like Chris said, it's strongly recommended to use the full system because that hub becomes a dedicated uh, device for that uh, configuration. Will an Apple TV serve as a hub? That's the Apple, one last question here. Apple TV 4 will. Uh, the caveats are it has to be running in the foreground, so it can't be used for any other um, uh, app at the same time. And um, you can actually leverage that feature because um, we can use any network cameras to be uh, used uh, on the Apple TV. So it becomes a camera viewer on your TV screen as well when you're running the Simple Hub software on it. Uh, the downside is that if an Apple TV, for whatever reason, loses power, will not actually reboot in a guided access mode like an iOS controller would. And so you just need to be aware that either you're, if you're using a tvOS device that there's either some sort of uh, UPC on it so it continuously can run. But yes, it can absolutely run on a tvOS as well. Great, great. Well, thanks, Rob, for taking the time and, uh, and helping answer and clarify some of these questions. Uh, and uh, everybody, again, thank you for taking the time out of your day to, to listen and learn about uh, Simple Control. It's a really cool system. 
uh, definitely reach out to your account manager at Capital so we can get you set up. We can get you the links for the other trainings coming up, the live trainings. Again, you have to see it in person. You have to play with it. Uh, so take advantage of this control system and the uh, and the training day special. Uh, Simple Control was kind enough to extend that past today all the way out to the 10. So definitely take advantage of this. Okay, but don't wait till the last minute uh, because it's not going to make us or <laughs> Simple Control or the account managers uh, go a little nuts when we find out. You know, very last minute we got to try and get you set up as a dealer and uh, and get that going. I mean, we definitely will. We'll fight to the very end for you, but. Uh, but take advantage of it. Hop on. Uh, give your account manager a call right away so we can get you set up as a dealer so you can take advantage of this special. So, again, thanks, guys. Thank you, everybody, for uh, for taking the time and, and learn a little more about Simple Control. So.